What is up, you guys? Welcome. If you're new, welcome back. If you're not, it's me, Reese, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking all about a game that has become one of my new favorites on my Nintendo Switch, and that game is Pikmin 4. I'm pretty much going to be giving my opinion now, after finishing the game, what my thoughts are, and it's kind of a full circle moment because when I was first starting this channel, I did do a review of the trailer for this game, so why not, now that I'm all done with it, come back and let you guys know what I think. So if any of that interests you, join the party chat, and let's get into it. journey with the Pikmin franchise all started back with Pikmin 3 Deluxe for the Nintendo Switch. My sister initially had this game, but when she discovered that you could play it co-op, we started playing together and we had so much fun playing it. It was so good. Great co-op game. So whenever Pikmin 4 was announced, we were super excited because we love finding those games that we can play together and progress through together because we just love playing things together. <laughs> and Pikmin 3 Deluxe being our introduction to the Pikmin series outside of a very fun Pikmin game on Nintendo Land for the Wii U, this being our actual first introduction made us want to try out other Pikmin games. But at the time, there was no easy way to try out the previous ones. So another one coming out was super duper exciting for us and we were just thrilled to pick it up and play it. So when I saw the trailer, that's what gave me the idea to review it on my channel, kind of also as a surprise for her and for her to also like see the trailer and see my thoughts to it. And lo and behold, when the game came out, we got it and we started. So with us still being technically new to the series, it was super duper exciting. Of course, later on they released the pick one and two for the Switch that I never really got a chance to pick up, but we started playing Pikmin 4 as a duo. I'll talk about the co-op a wee bit later. And thus our journey began. Immediately, what was a thing that I really enjoyed was the vivid colors. I love colorful things. I love color. I love, love color. And one of the main things that I noticed right off the bat was how colorful the game looks. It just has that color pop that a lot of Nintendo games have that brings me that childlike joy for the game. And if you've been here long enough, which I highly doubt, then you could have seen that in my reaction to the Pikmin 4 trailer, one of the things that I was most excited for was the fact that I could customize my own character. I love when you can customize your own character. It helps me feel more immersed into the game, just being able to say, that's me. And then it actually be what came out of my brain my idea pod. <laughs> I feel more immersed and a little more connected to the game and the character that I'm playing as. Not to say that set main characters can't have the same immersive effect, but that's only if I can relate to them personally. Obviously, I feel connected to the silent protagonists that are just kind of set because they're silent, meaning you can attribute whatever thoughts you're having to what your character could possibly be thinking at the time. Whereas with other games where the main character, I know a good example, the Trails of Cold Steel series. Let me look at there. Rain Schwarzer. I'll have to insert something here. He is a set main character and he has his own thoughts his own voice, etc. And so because I can't relate to that character, I feel less connected to him, therefore also less connected to what's going on unless something comes up and I feel some kind of fashion route. So for me, I'm a girl 
I love customization. I have met people who do not, who aren't fans of that and they prefer having a set main character with their own thoughts. But for me, it's a little bit different. I like to be able to sprinkle myself into the mix so that I feel like I'm in it. Because for me, if I don't feel like I'm connected in any way, then normally I do drop off from certain things. It's just the kind of player that I am. So, I was super excited whenever Pikmin 4 showed, oh my gosh, you can customize your character. I wasn't expecting it at all because it wasn't something that was like there before. Obviously, the characters in Pikmin 3 were likable enough to where it's like, I love them all, I'll play as any of them. So I wasn't expecting you to be able to customize your own character, but it added that little touch that just made me all the more excited for the game. So going into it, obviously, I'm already looking at it with somewhat rose colored glasses. And I like to give that context because there may be some things that you guys maybe found flawed about the game that I might not have seen that took place in the beginning stages at it wasn't an issue for me because it checked certain boxes already and it was a franchise that I already really liked. Though that's never stopped me before from having criticism, in this case, who knows? So I feel like it's good context to add. The story is not a whole lot different than previous story. The main thing that you have to do is save Captain Olimar and then the whole midst of that happening, well, the ship crashes, you gotta find the rest of the crew, and after you find the crew then you have to find Captain Olimar. It's a pretty straightforward and straight-laced kind of story with just enough to get you to progress, in my opinion. It's a likable cast of characters with the dialogue feeling like definitely have a grasp on these characters' personality. Sometimes when things aren't voiced, it can be difficult to get a grasp on a character's true personality because in one set of dialogue, you might hear a certain voice attached to it and then another set of dialogue completely shakes up that impression that you got of how that character might be speaking or how they might act generally. But I think this game does a good job of consistency in that sense from character to character. Though obviously, this is Pikmin. There's not a huge amount of depth in what the characters are saying and a lot of their dialogue that they have is more so for a lighthearted laugh than it is to get you like, deeply thinking about things. That's just not what this game is for. And for what kind of game it is, I really liked how the characters interacted and talked to each other amongst themselves in the squad. I felt most connected to, obviously, the people that we kind of are out with, which is Colin, and then I believe her name is Shepard, but she's the leader, basically. I felt most connected to those two characters, probably because towards the beginning, like, get their dialogue a lot more than you knew the other characters, because as you find them, they're kind of just there. They all have their different roles that they play and things that they do, but there aren't a whole lot of scene-esque moments with them individually the way that we start out with getting to know Colin and Shepard in the beginning of the game. So I found myself feeling most connected to those two characters. We are a part of a rescue corp that is sent to answer the distress signal that Captain Armar set off. It only just so happened that we unfortunately all got split up in things but it still stays pretty on track with the main point being that we need to rescue, rescue, rescue. That's quite literally our job. We have our trusty sidekick, Awachi, who is on this journey with us and is super duper cute, useful. And that's kind of overall just as far as the general summary of the story goes. But I want to talk about the gameplay. For those of you who've played Pikmin, then you're not going to feel like you're in foreign territory as far as this game goes. The Pikmin pretty much act just as they do. In my experience, Pikmin 3 Deluxe, so if you've played that, then you already will have an idea of how to play this game. I can't speak for the original two because I have not played them, but I would assume they're not too, too different from that, at least the general basic Pikmin that you kind of towards the beginning, which is red, yellow, and blue. All the Pikmin, obviously, have their own separate roles. Red Pikmin, it's kind of obvious by color association with the first three. And as it goes on, bulges into they have to tell you or you might not guess territory. So the red Pikmin obviously have association to fire, yellow, electricity, blue, water. 
pretty obvious. But what's cool about the Olympic Mini is you can also throw them higher. And the blue ones can swim. So red ones are just literally the base of Pikmin, but they're still quite, quite useful in fire areas. So we're still gonna give them credit where credit is due. We have the rock Pikmin that are black and they look like rocks. Yeah, you could probably guess they're heavier. So they pack more of a punch when you throw them at something and they're good at breaking things that are solid and harder to break. We have the Ice Pikmin, which I believe are unique to Pikmin 4. If I'm not mistaken, they were advertised as one of the new Pikmin types. And these Ice Pikmin, they can freeze bodies of water, which is quite helpful when you have a bunch of Pikmin that aren't blue Pikmin, yet need to transport something or get somewhere where there's a big body of water involved. They also can freeze enemies, which makes fighting enemies a lot easier and also makes it less likely for you to lose a bunch of Pikmin, though I still lost a bunch of Pikmin, because once you freeze the enemies, it's just free, free eatings. You just throw your Pikmin. If you throw enough of them while that monster's frozen, you should get a lot of damage in, which is super useful. I think that's a pretty good summary of the Ice Pikmin. There is the Purple Pikmin. I'm not sure if they had a name or not, but the Purple Pikmin, they are heavy. Seriously, because if you throw them, you'll hear a boom. They're heavy and they're also strong. They have the strength of 10 normal Pikmin, which definitely definitely is quite useful but you don't get them until later so you don't get to cheat them. they also do pack more of a punch when you throw them at things obviously because they're heavy but i would say they still die just as easily as the other basic pikmin we have the white pikmin and those pikmin are for poison and toxic fumes and stuff didn't really have to use them much in the base game i'm not sure if in the post game well we will see more of them or not because i just want to talk about the base game and not go any further before talking about the base game <laughs> but they exist there are also the flying pikmin who can carry things up in the air and they can fly higher than the other pikmin quite useful getting things down super duper high didn't get a whole lot of them though which is unfortunate and who am i forgetting glow pikmin who are also unique to this game but we'll talk more about them in just a bit. So overall, the whole thing that is important for you to do in the beginning is collect enough treasure to build the sparklium that is needed to power the ship to explore other areas. So your main focus is going to be gathering treasure and raw materials. Raw materials help you build things like bridges, but they also act as the game's currency where you can buy different upgrades for yourself and Alachi and different items that you might need along the way. By gathering raw material and gathering treasure, you build up the sparklium until it's enough to where you can traverse the next place and continue the search for either your team members or all of them. I found this to be honestly a bit too easy. It was very easy to get a lot of treasure in the beginning to where you can't really have to try that hard without the rest of it, though we were still determined to 100% all of these areas, so it didn't really matter regardless, but I do think they could have challenged us a little bit more. Otherwise, it would have been very easy to just race through the game, I feel. So rather than getting food stuffs like in Pikmin 3, we're getting treasure because, hey, while we're here, why not strike it rich by collecting all this cool stuff we see? Something that was also cool that they introduced in this game that I do believe is unique to this game, but feel free to correct me if I am wrong, are the nighttime expeditions. And before I can talk about that, I have to talk about another facet of this. While we're looking for our crew members and we're searching for Almar, we come across other castaways that are lost here. And obviously we're rescue corps, right? So we're gonna rescue them too. And those different people that we find often offer side quest-esque things you can do. More so they just act like an achievement system and they give you rewards for achieving certain things. There's also some that have other features like those that will let you train, aka practice your Dandori, which we will talk about, and let you change up your look and just cool stuff like that. They don't have a whole lot of personality at all. And some of them are just there because they literally offer nothing, but they exist. They're also leaflings. 
and those are castaways who were affected by some kind of leaf virus that covers them in leaves, which you yourself can be a leafling if you find and rescue enough of them. You yourself can be a leafling. Yes, you can. And no one will say anything about it. <laughs> but it's just a cool little thing if you like that. I turned myself into a leafling for the whole end portion of the game. And these leaflings, they are obsessed with Dandori. And Dandori essentially is basically how you strategize and effectively use your time and your manpower to get things done. That's the best way that I can summarize what the heck Dandori is. These leaflings are obsessed with Dandori and they will send you on these challenges that force you to be smart about how you're using your Pikmin and how you are using your time. I find these challenges to be very, very fun and they definitely get the wheels turning in the brain. I also feel like they could help. If I were to play through the game again, probably would have been less days because my Dandori is well trained now. It would have took me less rescue days, which I forgot to mention. Yes, days still do progress and I guess it's just kind of like some things where like time you can see how long exactly it took you to complete the story. I don't know. <laughs> but I feel like my days could have been shorter. Now that my Dandori has been successfully trained through these challenges, it helps you also learn how to effectively move around your pigment to where you're maximizing your results in the shortest amount of time possible. So pretty cool. And that'll knock them out for some reason. They'll just be so impressed by your Dandori dory that you just can't take it and they'll faint and then you take them back with you <laughs> once you rescue yanni he actually comes up with a cure for how to treat these leaflings and turn them back into people because while they're leaflings we can't find out any information about the person that they once were which kind of makes it difficult to actually rescue them because we don't know where we'd be returning them to to begin with so in order for him to make that cure you have to go and collect what he needs for the medicine and in order to do that you have to go out at night that's where the night expeditions come in during these night expeditions you have to protect the lumignol this is the thing that at the end of the night will produce this green glow sap that he needs in order to turn these leaflings back into their true form so that is where we're introduced to the final Pikmin that I was going to mention, which is the Glow Pikmin. These Glow Pikmin get from getting these stars that kind of remind me of star bits from Super Mario Galaxy. You collect them, they go to the Lumignol, and they spawn more Glow Pikmin who can float. They basically can do anything. They kind of like, I don't know, I want to call them ghost Pikmin, but I don't think that would be 100% accurate. These glow Pikmin are who fight with you instead of the Pikmin from the daytime because these glow Pikmin, they are capable of being around at night and can go up against these monsters when they're in their frenzied nighttime state. The night expeditions were one of my favorite parts of this game. Something else I forgot to mention. Caves. Well, not necessarily I wouldn't call them caves. What they actually are are tunnels that go underground. There's no time limit the way there is in the regular day once you're in the cave. And when you come out of the cave, one-sixth of your time progresses. So... Who knows how fast or slow time is really going down there. This time does progress. But if it takes you long to complete these caves, it doesn't necessarily matter. They act as dungeon type situations where there's just certain Pikmin that you have access to during them. And a lot of the time there are castaways there. Obviously there's different treasure in them. And completing these definitely affects your overall completion or whatever place you're in quite a bit. These also were something I very much enjoyed because they also have you use the Pikmin in different creative ways, but there's not too, too much to say about them other than that. They definitely cover all the bases as far as elements go. They have you use each Pikmin in some kind of way, and they're how you get a lot of the special Pikmin that you can't produce via the onion. That's how you get pretty much the majority of them. There's another facet of this game that I have yet to talk about as pertains to the gameplay, and that is your interactions with Olimar. Let's not play dumb. We all knew right away by the face that that red leafling who also happened to have a dog with him was clearly Olimar. We knew from the jump. Don't pretend out there. Do not pretend. 
So I'm spoiling that, sorry if you haven't finished the game, but it's pretty clear that guy's Olimar. If you've ever seen Olimar's face, you know, Red Leafling is Olimar. And Olimar, every time you encounter him, he will subject you to a Dandori battle. And during these, you're competing with him as a computer, and this is kind of a mock version of what you can do with another player, because there is a separate section for Dandori battles between you and another player. You guys would actually be playing against each other for real. But in this case, you're going up against the computer, who is Olimar, and you guys are competing to see who can get the highest score as far as their Dandori goes, and these do get difficult. It really just depends. In my opinion, sometimes Olimar and his pup get a little lucky, and other times, not so much. But uh, these interactions with him just made it so obvious who it was because his face. Everyone knows those dashes for eyes and that round nose. So I don't know who was genuinely shocked at this being Captain Olimar. Got clues throughout the game, throughout his journals, as to where he is and what happened along the way for him. Pay attention to them towards the beginning as I'm paying attention to them towards the latter half of the game. These are once again, a fun and welcome challenge because it adds yet another challenge on top of the challenge of just the regular role of the Andori challenges. <laughs> and we were cool enough to platinum all of those. Not the first time around though. I believe we platinumed a single one the first time around. So to do my own horn, but not that much. <laughs> and last but not least, I want to get into the one thing about the gameplay that disappointed me the most. And that is the co-op. If you guys recall, rewind to the beginning of this video where I said what my initial experience with Pikmin was, and that was playing through Pikmin 3 Deluxe co-op with my sister. That was what introduced me to the series and got me really into it, was playing it co-op with my sister. So going into Pikmin 4, obviously I'm playing it with my sister and we're playing a co-op, but the co-op was definitely not the same, which isn't wrong inherently on its own, but it was very lackluster and disappointing. For the co-op for Pikmin 4, unlike in Pikmin 3 where you each were your own character, you had your Pikmin that were with you, and there were different ways to go about things like based on that, because there's already the aspect of switching characters just as player one, so as Player one and two, you just already have another person operating one of the other characters. And that was good. In this game, there is also a switch mechanic where you can switch between yourself and Awachi. So one would assume that the co-op would allow you to play as Awachi. Now I can see how certain things wouldn't work if that were the case, but I'm just saying. In this version of the co-op, player two is nothing but a pebble shooter. That's right. Player two is just a thing aiming at the screen and shooting pebbles. You also do get items as you kill stuff, as you find treasure, as you just do things in general in the game. And those items are very helpful in a pinch. Don't get me wrong. But I would have liked for there to be a more immersive experience for the player two in this one the same way that there was in the previous game where we both feel like we're truly contributing something in this case it more so seems like having a player two is simply playing on easy mode rather than still posing some sort of a challenge in and of itself yes i still had my challenges with the game in spite of having a player two around on occasion but all in all, I would say having a player too doesn't change the game experience in an impactful way, the way that I feel like it does with Pikmin 3. I also feel like because there are so many characters who just do absolutely nothing as far as the crew goes, I'm sure it would have been easy to implement one of them also being able to help out. Like I said, I don't think it was necessary, and yes, we did get used to and begin to enjoy this way of co-op as time went on, but it was quite the letdown initially when we first started playing to see that this is all the co-op was. It felt more like 
it was something there or when you have that annoying little sibling or cousin or whatever that really really wants to play too and you're like fine and normally you just give them a controller that's not plugged in or on or anything but in this case you're actually giving them a little way to contribute a little something to your gameplay in a way that won't force you to play something else just to appease your parents so that they don't think you're mean blah, blah, blah. i'm speaking from an old childhood personally i used to be a game hog and when we all shared a console i would be on it so much and you know what a story for another time i'll save it for the podcast soon anyways <laughs> it felt more like it was just a throwaway feature they didn't put a whole lot into it and so it was disappointing initially for that to be all the co-op was however we did grow accustomed to it and come to enjoy the co-op on this game so i'm not just completely ragging on it that's just where my main criticism is as far as this game goes because it wasn't quite what we were expecting and was a huge downgrade from the last game we had played and considering our introduction to the series was a really great co-op experience. We expected the same thing because we had we didn't have any previous experience with the Pikmin games to tell us that that wouldn't be the case going forward or that that was a one-off way of enjoying Pikmin. I think I worded that in a way that makes perfectly good sense, hopefully. Anyways, all in all though, I want to say that I did really, really enjoy this game. These days, I find it rather difficult to find a game that I actually want to complete. And even less so, I find a game that I love so much that I'm willing to 100% complete just because I like it. It's not as common as it used to be when I was younger. And this game, I feel like, gave me that childlike joy. It just felt fun, but it felt even though it had its moments where it was hard, it just felt like a game just like, you don't have to try too hard here. You don't have to be some master. You can come to master this, but like, you don't have to be some gaming completionist genius to fully go through and 100% these areas and the different things. And I don't know if it was, here's the thing. I don't know if it was just us being good at it or if it was just easy. And I like that. I like that I don't know. Because then I'm just left feeling good at it. Because either way, you can't deny those 100%. So I gotta be good at something, right? It just restored a certain love for what makes Nintendo different from all these other gaming companies. Just that colorful, cute appeal of their games everything's so hyper realistic with everyone else now and nintendo just keeps it at the roots with cute cartoony characters and colorfulness vibrancy that it's hard to find i'm having to change my settings in order to get some saturation on those other games <laughs> And I don't know, I just feel like such a kid again. Now, yes, it did take us a little bit longer to complete the game because we were playing it together and obviously different work schedules, different life things. There wasn't always time, but it was just so nice to sit down and play when there was time. Just enjoying our sisterhood, being co-op together. Obviously, I was player one because I'm older, but uh, she was actually player one with the last people. It's so fitting it was fitting just a fun simple game like games can be it had its complexities yes but when you look at it from just outside looking in give me a summary of this game perspective then it's a simple game and yet enjoyable and i don't know how it captured that kind of magic that i feel like it's lacking because a lot of games are simple now but i guarantee you i'm not sitting down for hours and hours on end trying to 100 percent them but this game held me in that way and it just captured a kind of magic and essence that i haven't seen too much of as of late and I feel like it had such good implications for what's to come with Nintendo. Now, I could be being just super optimistic and crazy and delusional for thinking all of this out of a simple Pikmin game, but it captured something that now seems so hard to find, if that makes sense. 
So obviously, I'm telling you guys, I really loved this game. I loved how it ended. They didn't make too much of a big deal about once we found Olimar, because I think they knew it was obvious that that's who we were interacting with as that red leafling all along, so they didn't feel the need to be heavy-handed when it came to the ending where we finally found him. It was just like, yes, we found him, let's go home. And then obviously stuff happened that will lead to the post-game things, but they didn't do too much. Because if they would have been too overdramatic about Almar, then it would have made all of the characters feel way too dumb. <laughs> they had their comments about, oh, well maybe that's Almar. We think it's Almar, but we don't know for sure. And that kind of had me like, uh, what do you mean you don't know? But they haven't seen him in previous games the way that we, the player, obviously have. So they got a little pass for that. But if they would have made it too much of a huge deal once it was so obvious, then that kind of would have had to like, blank face them. They didn't. The ending just felt so nice, sweet, and wholesome, but fulfilling. And it's like kind of that sadness because you don't want to leave all the Pikmin behind. And so I feel like they I feel like they knew that feeling would come. And obviously that's why something happened where it's like, alright, let's turn around and go back to that planet. Anyways, I think I've done more than enough rambling about my thoughts on Pikmin 4. Great game. And if you're somebody who wants a challenge but doesn't want you don't want something that's not gonna be just too insanely difficult that's gonna make you rage but you want a challenge that will fulfill that fiery side of you I don't know. then i would recommend pikmin if you're someone who likes more casual and chill games i would also recommend pikmin yes i know how exactly does that go with the challenge that you just said hear me out so say you like Animal Crossing. I want to say that there's something in the undercurrent of Pikmin that gives somewhat of an Animal Crossing feeling. It might be the progression of days, or the colors, or just the calm and settling music that the game has. But even if you want just a calm, laid-back experience, I can recommend Pikmin for that as well. It fits both of those categories in my mind and definitely fit both of those categories for me when i'm just wanting to like get in bed and just play something that's not gonna make me like sit up and get back energized and stuff because i feel like i gotta go hardcore now i can just sit back and play it but if i want to play it intensely i can do that too and it won't alter too much of my performance in the game <laughs> if that makes sense so i would say i recommend it for both of those things so if you haven't tried it out why not try it out you don't have to have played the other pikmin games for you to understand this one. They explain things perfectly well, I think, to where this could be your start. It could possibly get you into the Pikmin franchise, which I do think is slept on. <laughs> if you have played Pikmin 4, let me know what you thought about it. I'm curious, because like I said, I could just be looking with most colored glasses, but I do feel like genuinely playing and spending so much time playing the game, I think I have a pretty realistic idea. But you guys could think, what are you talking about? There's this wrong, this wrong, and this wrong. And if you think that, I want to hear your arguments. <laughs> because I'm curious. And if you're like me and you really enjoyed it, what did you enjoy the most about it? I don't know. We're in the party chat. Let's hear what you gotta say. Your mic is on. You're no longer muted. Let's hear what you wanna say. Or, you just agree with me. And I mean, do what you want. You know what? Do what you want. Do what you do. I think for me, that's gonna be about it. Peace out, you guys. Oh, please tell me why must we face this hard time? Don't look up there, where is your heart? Oh, please tell me always around you Believe in what she said today Remember how to come from the way Quick fun fact, you guys. I actually already recorded this Pikmin video and started editing it already, but then we beat the game. And so I just needed to come and re-record an entire video just giving my thoughts, summarizing the game as a whole, rather than just you know, how I felt about the game up to the point we were at. So I wanted to add this in because there's just a whole nother video that I already was halfway done editing that got scrapped 
in favor of me re-recording now that I can say that I fully experienced the game. I didn't know at the time that I had the idea for that video that we were so close to actually beating the game. So obviously, when I played it again to get back in the spirit of Pikmin for that video, I wasn't expecting it to be like, well, holy crap. Well, we just finished this last area and now all we have to do is do our final Dandori battle against Olimar. <laughs> so I was like, well, shoot, we might as well just finish it then. And if anything changes in my mind or if I think of something new to say, then I'll just redo my video. But there was obviously the chance that everything I would have said would have been the same. But I did really, really like the ending to where I couldn't see myself not mention it at all if I was doing a video about Pikmin. So I also said in the last video that I hadn't beat it and so I wouldn't spoil it. And that would have no longer been true. So I just redid the whole thing. And it's kind of funny because I feel like this is going to be an like ongoing thing. Every time I want to talk about a game, I end up just beating it before my video or during my the days of me editing <laughs> but who knows so far we're two for two splatoon side order been four beat before the videos can come out so pretty funny i don't know that that'll happen for everything because some of these games i'm not gonna like enough to finish i think and then that will no longer be a thing but i just thought it was a funny coincidence that it happened twice but anyways, I just wanted to insert this real quick while I'm about to lit and stuff for you guys. 